This is the Morning Weather Extreme video. James Spann here. And again, thank you to a bunch of people for filling in for me for the past uh, 10 days or so. Brian Peters for doing these videos. Uh, of course, we had uh, Ashley Brand and Jason Simpson at the station, J.B. Elliott and Bill Murray on the forecast desk. Thanks. The time off was greatly appreciated. But we've got a lot to talk about, so let's get right to it on this uh, Monday morning, the 4th of January. Some sky cam shots in a very cold morning. That's Hamilton from Hamilton High School. They're sitting around 20. They were in the teens earlier, but they've come up a bit because of clouds. Gadsden, uh, they're sitting at uh, 19 up on the big mountain. And downtown Birmingham, same thing, 19 degrees. That's from the Daniel Building. Mercy me, it's cold. This will be a cold wave that will probably go in the record books, potentially in a number of different ways, but that's a pattern that's setting it up, cross-polar flow. And, of course, within that flow, we have occasional waves, which will stir up storms and rumors of storms. Here's a look at the numbers this morning. Looks like International Falls, Minnesota, is around 33 below zero this morning. That is enough to make you want to slap your mama. Uh, in Alabama, we got uh, teens and 20s. Uh, we were actually colder for many spots earlier this morning, but the little wave has produced some clouds moving numbers up a bit. There's a look at the uh, 5 o'clock observations. The cold spot is Coleman at 17, uh, the Gadsden Airport 18, the Birmingham Airport at 20. And you think that's cold, just wait until later in the week when a reinforcing shot gets in here. Uh, there's a look at the radar this morning at 510, and what you see... That is mostly Virga, light snow that is evaporating before reaching the ground. But having said that, it is conceivable that some folks might uh, turn on the back light and see a flake or two. But the very, very dry air in the lower levels will pretty much evaporate most of that off before reaching the ground. We'll call it partly sunny today. And, of course, the cold is the word. Watch warning map. If you're traveling today or traveling back or football or whatever, uh, just a couple of scattered winter weather advisories around the nation. Up north now, we got a winter storm watch for Minnesota and uh, North Dakota in advance of the shortwave that might bring a few snowflakes to Alabama later this week, and that's one we'll be watching. And the overall precipitation around the nation for the next five days, valid through Friday evening, uh, showing light amounts over the entire eastern half of the nation. And, of course, most all of that would be light snow. And around here in our state, at least this part of the state, that's suggesting only about a tenth of an inch in, uh, of liquid. That would be about one inch of snow in most cases, so uh, not suggesting a, a really big deal. This is the day three snow outlook. You can see that wave diving down from uh, uh, the Dakotas and Montana, producing some light snow across Iowa and Missouri, and that thing could create some uh, snow down here later this week. And again, that's got everybody buzzing, and we'll take a look at that. But again, I just want you to look at the Arctic Oscillation. Look at the bottom chart. Uh, it is strongly negative and stays strongly negative through mid-month. And you can see how uh, that is just a tremendous deviation from the numbers that we have seen uh, back in November and December. And that is problematic in that it looks like this cold could be here to stay for a while. Certainly we'll have moderating periods. Understand it's not going to be as cold as this all winter. This is the deep south, but uh, yeah, that that's going to – that's a big deal for a lot of people, for individuals. The cost of heating your home, your, your bills are going to be very high when you get them next month. And, of course, for uh, elderly people that don't have adequate heating, that's a threat to their lives. Uh, industry, just be aware that uh, uh, the first half of January looks cold and possibly beyond that. Well, let's look at modeling here. This is the GFS at noon today. This is the 06Z run, and this is at 500 millibars. And you can see that Vortmax uh, coming through the uh, trough to the west and it seems like the model might be a little slow in that feature. It's really uh, closer than that now. And down below that, the, the model is dry, and I think that's right. We're not going to mention snow flurries today, although some of you might see a few this morning. Uh, just cold. We'll struggle to rise above the freezing mark today. Pretty decent north breeze. We'll keep the wind chill value in the 20s all day. Uh, tomorrow, uh, same deal. We'll start the morning down in the uh, mid-teens probably. We know with each wave we get a little reinforcing shot, so we think tomorrow morning will be colder with a clear sky. Uh, we'll probably be in the middle teens, anywhere from 13 to 17. And during the day, highs only in the 30s. Wednesday, all right, here comes our uh, system that everybody's buzzing about here up north. Uh, diving down through the uh, Dakotas and down below that, we stay dry on Wednesday. We might hit upper 30s. Uh, like a tropical heat wave. We think we will be above freezing. Everybody will be above freezing Wednesday in advance of that. 
But you can see that big old 140 high, 148 high, almost a 1050 high over Canada that is poised to roll through here late this week and over the weekend. All right, snow fans, what do we have? This is noon Thursday. Now, this is the GFS. Uh, it is showing the deeper moisture basically over central Mississippi and points south, and even that is not overly impressive. Uh, that would be, you know, what, one to two inches of snow there. And then at 6 o'clock, you can see the deeper moisture is shunted south. And for North Alabama, that would only be a, a dusting or one inch or so. And it's all snow. It's clearly cold enough for that. Uh, but that is certainly not supportive of a major snowstorm here. But let's look at the other models. You know, we don't look at just one model run. Uh, you know, in these situations, you, even at this stage of the game, understand we are 84 to 90 hours away. There's not much skill in trying to tell you exactly how much snow is going to fall. And we're not going to try and do that right now. We're just looking at ideas. Uh, this is the NAM, North American Mesoscale model. This is uh, 84 hours, which is uh, noon on Thursday. A uh, little slower than the GFS. Got very light snow coming through. And basically more of a frontal forcing kind of thing, a, a cold front forcing. Not really Gulf moisture involved with this. So the NAM jives up with the GFS and that uh, it's probably not going to snow much. Uh, let's look at the European this is 6 o'clock uh, Thursday evening. A little more moisture shows up with the European now, and it's also warmer. I think uh, it, will, it will be plenty cold for snow here. I'm not that worried about ice or rain or anything like that, even though the uh, critical thickness value in this case is up around Birmingham. I think this model has a warm bias. It doesn't have a grasp on the depth of the cold air in place across the continent. But uh, you can see that the moisture is deeper for sure, and that's suggesting uh, yeah, maybe somebody gets three inches or so, if that's correct. And let's look at the Canadian model. You know, this one's performed pretty well, and it's also pretty moist. Uh, this is valid uh, Friday evening. I'm sorry, Friday. Thursday evening at 6 o'clock. I'm just getting back off vacation. It's going to take a time to get my day straight here. Thursday evening at 6 o'clock, and like the... Uh, European, it's got a little more of a warm bias. It's got the thickness line just north of here, but the moisture is much deeper with some warm air advection and Gulf moisture getting involved. So you can see how the Canadian and the European kind of suggesting that there could be some Gulf moisture and a pretty decent snow, maybe, you know, two, three inches here uh, with the American models uh, suggesting a drier solution with just a dusting or maybe one inch. So uh, we'll see. Once we get within 72 hours, we'll start making the maps and doing the specific projections, which means... Tomorrow morning at this time, we'll do that. Just be aware there's potential for some snow in here Thursday or Thursday night. Uh, and we'll fine-tune that as we go. Uh, don't think it'll be any super-duper major historic snowstorm. Nothing to really get worked up about, but the idea is on the table. And then Friday, uh, here comes your new shot of cold air. We'll probably stay below freezing all day, big 1,044 high to the north. It's pretty strong north winds. That means single-digit wind chill values. And Saturday morning, now let me say, if we have snow cover, uh, we're going for the single digits. Uh, we'll be down there in the uh, 5 to 9 degree range. If we don't have snow cover, we might be closer to 10. Whatever. That will be the coldest morning we've seen here in a long time. Uh, that is pipe bursting weather. That is dangerously cold to humans and pets and everything else. So bring in your, you know, your, your pets, your plants, your husbands, everything. Bring them in. And Sunday, we stay cold. I, I don't, you know, let me tell you something. I, I think we go below freezing uh, probably Thursday night and stay below freezing. It'll sometime early next week. There's Monday and things start to moderate a bit. Maybe we'll get up in the mid to upper 30s. And Tuesday looks like maybe a, a crack at reaching the low 40s. And that'll be good. All right, next uh, system at mid-month. This is the 15th of January. It's a good-looking shortwave, good-looking Gulf storm, good-looking snowstorm, but we all know that that's out there in voodoo country. But is something like that possible? Absolutely. If it stays cold here long enough, we'll have one or two of those. Uh, you got these. You got an El Nino and a strongly negative Arctic oscillation. Forget these models. Forget everything else. It's just pattern recognition. It will happen. Exactly who, where, when, why, what, we don't know yet. And then uh, four days later, the end of the forecast on the 19th, we start to moderate. Hey, wouldn't that be nice? Strong southern branch there with no Arctic air involved. Will it get that warm with a strongly negative AO? Sure, we'll moderate some at some point, but I don't think we'll stay uh, warm for long in this pattern. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 3.30 or so today. And if you're local to us, we invite you to watch us on television this evening at 5, 6, and 10.